learn something new about someone, your perception of them changes. When you see someone dressed to the nines, bow tied, the assumption was that I was some Ivy League guy or some attorney. I was still keeping this close to my vest, and folks just kind of presumed that I had a whole different other background than what I did. A lot of people really struggle with getting back on their feet with criminal records. These records taunt them. We don't want to make it harder for people to find employment, to find housing. Um, you know, if we want to lower recidivism rates, these are the kinds of reforms that we need to be looking at. The more you drill down and you look at the nuts and bolts of these individual cases, I was horrified at how arbitrary and random some of these sentencings are. When I ended up getting pulled over during a traffic stop, I found that firearm and half ounce of crack cocaine, and that netted me a five to 10 year sentence. My five years at Chester were very productive. What's appealing about politics to me was the power of it. When I thought I was out in the streets and I was a tough guy with the guns and stuff, at the end of the day, the person who had the most power and dominion over me was the guy or, or the woman who had the black robe on. So for me, realizing that, that's what I wanted to do. Constitutionally, in Pennsylvania, if you're convicted of a felony or any misdemeanor that is classified as a crime of falsification, you can't legally hold office. So I had that impairment against me because of my two felony convictions. My sole intent for the pardon was to be able to lawfully hold office, uh, but in particular, uh, the office of mayor in Harrisburg. I am here to celebrate the appointment of our new pardon secretary. This is an important process available for all Pennsylvanians in order to allow them to participate more fully uh, in our society with a chance, a second chance. It gives me uh, an enormous honor to introduce to you the secretary of the Board of Pardons, Brandon Fleck. Let me tell you why this uh, appointment is huge. In me, not only do you have an advocate who intimately understands the clemency process, you have someone who understands uh, what it's like to, to bear that scarlet letter of a conviction on your sleeve. Brandon was the only individual that I ever considered for this role. Brandon is the very best embodiment of the power of a second chance. I felt like this was a once in a lifetime position and kind of put my selfish aspirations to the side. If you're not eligible for clean slate or expungement, your only form of recourse is a pardon. Being a successful pardon applicant myself, I'll give you some of those insider tips of how you can put forth the most compelling application. have these systems in place where folks are being criminalized for relatively venial offenses. Lieutenant Governor likes to point out about marijuana, right? Folks being charged with small possession. If you have prior convictions, that ultimately leads to someone being incarcerated for a subsequent offense. The lack of diversionary programming, especially when it comes to juveniles. Certainly a lot of folks are caught in that vicious cycle as a result of those two things, hyper-policing, uh, and mandatory minimums. 
We want to thank our guest, Brandon J. Flood, Secretary of the State of Pennsylvania Board of Pardons and probably one of the best dressed people in Harrisburg. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, it's a pandemic. I'm still, you know, I'm still all right. <laughs> We're in the business of executive clemency. Pardons usually extends to individuals who have been convicted of a crime. They were released or uh, they're off supervision. They've been able to demonstrate for some period of time that they've rehabilitated themselves uh, and they want to be relieved of that conviction altogether. All right, Governor, we're going to start with case number one, Kelly Buck Miller. Can you tell me a little bit about what's changed with you that these kinds of behaviors won't occur again? Commutations is the modification or the reduction of one sentence. So think of someone who's been sentenced to life without parole who wants to be released and serve life on parole, or think of someone who's been excessively sentenced or wrongfully convicted, right? You know, the, the, the punishment doesn't fit the, the crime. So that's the relief that we provide. Every major religion has redemption and forgiveness at its core, and our criminal justice system should emulate that. First case, Bettina Carter. Ms. Grayson? Yes. Mr. Gubernick? No. General Shapiro? Yes. Governor? Yes. Application recommended. Brandon and I share a common goal that we want to leave the best performing revolutionized pardons and commutation process behind. And we are well on our way to doing that. Even if we stop today, under his leadership, we will have digitized the process for the first time in ever. We have cleared a backlog that has existed since its inception. We have freed and gotten more people to the governor's desk than any administration prior. And our pardons applications are up. Yeah, that's right. About 400. 400 (laughs) percent. Yeah. And we also waived the cost. And I'm emphatic when I tell people, you don't need a lawyer. You can do this on your own. Everyone deserves justice. We use the phrase second chance kind of liberally. Even in my case, I needed, what, four chances, really. We'll finish this year with more than 2,000 folks applying. There should be tens of thousands of deserving folks applying. I'm definitely about paying it for it. What's the point of living on this planet if you're not making an impact?